Hello, I'm Jim. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to run you through how to install RetroArc, which is an emulation front end for Xbox, uh, Xbox One, Series S, and Series X. However, with Xbox One, you're not going to get the, the, the simple power that you get with the other consoles, so you won't be able to play things like PS2, GameCube, even Dreamcast, I think, is an issue, and N64 on Xbox One, but stuff down from that, like SNES, NES, Mega Drive, all that stuff works. But anyway, this is mainly for the series consoles. So the first thing you want to do is you'll want to head over to your Microsoft Edge browser. And you'll want to go to this website here, which is gamer13.github.io. And once you're here, you'll load up to this, this web page here. And you only want to grab two apps from this page. Firstly, you'll want to grab the FTP. So you click that, you go yes, and you go open. It'll take you to your Microsoft Store page where it'll say get free, download it, it'll add it to your installs, go back to Edge, go up to RetroArc itself, download the app. Don't worry about everything else there, it's not needed, because RetroArc takes care of all the other stuff that's there anyway. So get that free. Got it. It'll start downloading in the background to your Xbox. Like you can see there, the FTP is installed and RetroArc is installing. Now that those have installed, you've got a RetroArc.1 and a FTP, uh, Durango FTP.1 on your Xbox and you can open those up. However, if you open up RetroArc right now, you're not going to have much there. It's missing assets and all sorts of stuff. So what you want to do, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the online updater and you want to go to update assets. Now it shouldn't take very long. You can see it's only going to take a few fucking seconds if you've got a decent connection. It extracts those and then it's going to restart it and you're going to have a better font. See, now the, now the updates look all right. You also want to go ahead and download um, overlays, update databases, uh update cheats if you want cheats i don't personally use them so that's fine with me uh you can do update core info files which you definitely want to do and then content downloader and i suggest downloading the uh dolphin stuff where is it nintendo gamecube Wii. you download that uh without this the Wii stuff won't work. So content downloader, Dolphin required assets. That's what you want, download those. You will need to download and install some BIOS files for things like PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. I will show you how to do that. I'm not gonna show you where to get the BIOS from, but uh, I will show you how to do that. So basically you're set up now if you want to run content from like a USB drive, or uh, if you want to put games internally, I'll show you how to do that as well. I'll show you how to do that. That's going to be with FTP and I'll come back to that in a second. So for now, uh, you want to close uh, RetroArc. It's all set up and ready to go for just standard things, but you need BIOS files. So I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Okay, so the next thing you definitely want to do is you want to open up your FTP client here. Wait for it to log it on, it tells you some information, but you don't need to know any of this stuff really. Just go down to start. And it's going to tell you your server IP for. It's listing on port 21. It tells you your address uh, underneath the address of this device. So down the bottom there, you want the like the one that says 192.168.0.240. That's my local address for the Xbox. So once you have that running, you want to switch over to your PC. So I've got this uh, Xbox running on my capture card so I can do this all at the same time. So I'm opening up FTP client now and it was 240. So you want to type in 192.168.0.240. It'll be different for you most likely. And it was running on port 21. So you then go click quick connect and it says don't, it's just unsecure, but it's directly to your Xbox. That's so fine. I'm using FileZilla by the way. You can use whatever you like. FileZilla is just my one of choice. There you go. So you can see all the folders on your Xbox. If you go to local folder, and then you go here to the one that says RetroArc, that's the one you just installed on your Xbox. Uh, you can go down to here, you can go local state, and then there's all your RetroArc stuff. So you get your assets and your system and all of that. So you go system, 
and there's nothing currently in there. Okay, so now that you're in your local state folder in your Recro Arc um, category, you basically want to first go to Downloads, where we internally downloaded that Dolphin MU for the Wii GameCube folder, and you want to drag that to the system folder in RetroArch. So my system file cat is here. I want to drag it to system. And hopefully, it will all go to system. <laughs> we'll check it in a second. Yeah, so now it's all moved over. GameCube and Wii's all ready to go. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, you, what you want to do though, is you want to grab yourself a PlayStation 2 BIOS. Now, if you go to uh, the retro, the lib retro website and you type in PCSX2, this is just for reference sake, uh, you'll be able to see what BIOS it needs here. BIOS, attention, for compatibility reasons, don't use the blah, 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 blah. And then they use an example of these ones. So I've found those ones. I've got those ones. They're the ones I'm going to use. Uh, so if you go back over to here, make a folder called PCSX2, as you can just see right here. Inside that, make a folder called BIOS. Put all your BIOS files inside that that you've got, and then you want to transfer that over to the system folder, to the Xbox. So if I go back to here now, if I go system, it should definitely be there. <laughs> it's not showing for some reason. I'm gonna refresh it. There we go. PCSX2 BIOS and all its files are now there. Um, this is for Sega Saturn. So is that one. They're for different regions of Sega Saturn. So if you want to copy those down, or you can search up um, Beetle Saturn BIOS requirements, um, and that's what you'll get. Uh, and then that one is for PlayStation One. So we want to copy those all over to the Xbox system folder as well. And now you have the way to play PS2 games, GameCube games, PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn. Uh, that's the only, the, the only, only BIOS you actually really need. Uh, most of the other emulators will play without BIOSes just fine. In fact, if you use Saba Sanshiro, which is the other Saturn core, um, you won't actually need a BIOS file at all. But that's just there in case you want to use Beetle Saturn. I'm not going to supply it any of those files they are files that you have to obtain yourself just like the games i'm not supplying those either legal reasons but if you can get them this is how they work so now that you've done that you can actually get out of that or if you want to uh, make a folder in here and then upload your games to it so let's just for instance um i will make a folder create directory uh, i will make a ps1 folder in there, I'm going to, and I'm just going to pop, um, I'll just pop Crash Bandicoot 1 on there. Wait for that to upload to the Xbox. So this is how you would do it if you're, if you're putting a game internally. If you're putting a game on a USB drive, you can literally just put the games on a USB drive in any folder you like and then look for it in RetroArch and it will, it'll run. So now I have a folder called PS1 inside the RetroArch folder in my local state. I can literally get out of that now, get out of that now, go back to the Xbox, and I can go stop. I can reopen RetroArch. And now I can literally go uh, make uh, load content or whatever, or I can make a playlist. So you can scan directories for your games, blah, blah, blah. I'll show you how that works, actually. So scan a directory. Uh, scan a file. I'll do a manual scan. Content directory is going to be that, and you'll see the folder I made called PS1. Scan this directory. Uh, system name. Uh, we'll, we'll find the PlayStation One. Sony PlayStation. Custom name. Not going to worry about that. Default core. Uh, we're going to run it in. Uh, let's find the let's find the core for. Sony PlayStation Beetle PSX. Um, we'll do Swan Station. That's the that's Duck Station. It's just a different different version of it. Bollock Station is not going to worry. We'll do Start Scan. Yeah, I only had the one game, so it's going to take like two seconds. Uh, scan complete. Now, if you go over to PlayStation here, it tells you I've got Crash Bandicoot, and it should just run. 
if I did everything correctly. There's that beautiful PlayStation sound. So that's the game running internally um, from that PS1 folder. Obviously, you can put a bunch of games in there if you want. There is a file size limit, though. I think it's 30 gig all up. Um, so that's playing fine. Now, what you'll want to do, quit RetroArch. <laughs> One handy tip in RetroArch itself, um, go to settings, go down to input, go down to hotkeys, menu toggle com controller combo. It's set to none by default. Go down and set to something like hold select for two seconds. You can set to whatever you like in there, but this lets you um, open the menu whilst you're in a game. So now go to configuration file and save that current configuration. So it's going to be saved across the board. Um, now, if I was to go and load Crash Bandicoot again, I can hold select for two seconds and it brings up a menu, which means I can get out of the game, open another game, do all sorts of stuff. I can also go to options and go to like enhancement settings and change the resolution of the game and all that. I'm not going to do that now because I've, I've done that on my duck station video. If you want to go and watch that, um, how to, how to get the most out of PlayStation one emulation, follow that, but the, with the options screen on here. So it's not the PC version, it's the Xbox version, but it, it works the same way. All of the settings you can find, um, under these, under these icons here. So do that. But that's it for setting up RetroArch uh, on the Xbox. You can run any game. So if you want to run Genki games, PlayStation 2 games, just send the ISOs to the Xbox, or you can actually have them on an external um, hard drive. And I'll show you how that works actually, because I've got my external hard drive right here. So I'm plugging my external hard drive with um, some ROMs on it into the Xbox. You'll see that it comes up, Seagate is ready. However, if you've never plugged it in before, it'll ask you if you want to use it for the Xbox or for media. Always select media so it doesn't reformat the hard drive. Now, if I was to open RetroArch, I can go load content and you'll see I have a D drive there now. This is my D drive with my ROMs on it. So let's open up, uh, let's open up like a PS2 game and see if they work. So let's go Crash Bandicoot, Wrath Cortex, and you'll have to find the, the system. So PlayStation 2. And if I did everything correctly, it should just play. You can see it made a memory card for you. Yeah, you know, it's booting that. PlayStation 2 logo came up, which means it read the game. Oh, I haven't set up, haven't set up the BIOS. <laughs> on the PlayStation 2, so it's going to make you do that as if it was a real system. So let's just go... God love it. Uh, we'll just do Sydney. Uh, standard winter time. Settings completed. So, with PS2, you may have an issue where it boots up in the BIOS every time. What you want to do is you want to load your content. So you want to go to your D drive or your internal drive or whatever you've got. Load your PS2 game. And then before it loads, you want to hold your select button down, get to the menu, and you want to go to options, and you want to go to system, and you want to go uh, fast boot on. What that does is it skips the BIOS and it makes the system region free. So any ISO you have uh, will boot, say if you want to play American games or whatever, but you're using the uh, PAL BIOS, which is fine. You can do that. Uh, you just have to have fast boot on. So it skips that um, initial load. And you'll see that if you've got that on, you close content and you've got to close RetroArch every time uh, you, re you reload a new PS2 game. Not any other system, but PS2 you really have to do close retro like every time. So you open it back up, go content, and go to where your ROM is. PS2. Um, oh, Crash Bandicoot. PS2. And now because we've got the skip BIOS, it shouldn't read the region of the game, and it should just play. 
There we go, it's loading up Crash Bandicoot. We'll let, just let it get into the game here a second. and So yeah, there you go, it's, playing, it's loading the game as if it was uh, a PS2 game, which is pretty good. You can improve the graphics on this, you can make it run at 4K, you can make it go 1080p. You do that simply by holding the select button. Uh, now that you've set that up and go to options and go to video, internal resolution, native PS2. If you change any of these um, settings, so if I go native PS2 and I change that to 1080p, um, that's fine. You can do that, but then you have to go down to here, overrides, and save either the whole core like that, which I suggest doing anyway because 1080p is fine, um, or you can save it for the individual game. So if one game doesn't run properly at a certain resolution or whatever, you can run it at a different resolution just for that game. So now that I've done that, I actually have to quit the game. Um, I have to go to close content. And I have to quit RetroArch because it's PS2. I have to reopen RetroArch. And I have to load content again. And I have to go ROMs. And I have to go PS2. And I have to go Crash Bandicoot. And I have to go PS2. You can set all those. If you if you make playlists, um, like I showed you before, um, they'll just run straight away from the playlist. You don't have to do all that fan dangling around uh, or finding where the game is. So now you can see it's actually loading at a much higher resolution. We'll get in the game. I'll show you how uh, PS2 performs as well, which is pretty decent, to be honest. Crap. Okay, so we're in the game, as you can see, it's running fine. So yeah, you've got your PS2 games set up, that's how you do that. Now if we exit this, um, I'll go to quick menu, I'll go close. Now it may have freeze and closing uh, content sometimes, there you go, it worked. Uh, you just you can just manually exit it using the Xbox guide button, which is fine But if I load content up and we go to D and I go to GameCube um, That should just work as well uh, Nintendo GameCube Wii Dolphin. Let's find out if this works And it does because we moved that dolphin folder over So you go, you can play Genki games, PS2 games, any other games should just run PS1, Sega Saturn, they should all just run, you choose the call that you like. I might go through some settings, how to set up RetroArch more in depth later, so to get the best out of each emulator that's on there, because you do have to set up each one individually. But that is how you get it running on the Xbox Series uh, consoles and Xbox One. Of course, Xbox One's gonna have way less performance. Uh, GameCube, PS2, Dreamcast, and all that, they run perfectly fine um, on the uh, on the Xbox. So there you go, there you have it. That's uh, lots of retro games available to you if you know what to do on RetroArch on the Xbox Series consoles. So until next time, uh, I hope this was at least informative in some way. <laughs> Peace out.